Hello, welcome back to my channel. I'm your host Chris Davis and today we are going to do another Young Justice Season 4 Phantoms <laughs> arc review. This one will be for Rocket. So Rocket's um, arc ended about a couple weeks ago and we're gonna I'm going to be doing a review of it. I'm gonna let you know my thoughts on it and whether I like the arc or not. And for the overall, I liked the arc. Um, my big criticism about it is we really didn't focus on Rocket all that much. To me, this arc was really used to progress other plots going on in Young Justice. <clears throat> so they really tied up um, Rocket's character arc towards the end, but we really didn't get a big focus on Rocket. I mean, they sh gave her more screen time than they usually do, but to me, they didn't really focus on Rocket um, in this arc. Her arc was kind of used to push other plots along. So, this arc really starts out with us in North Dakota, uh, Rocket's getting ready to take her child over to her husband's house. I guess they're separated or they're divorced. They don't really mention that, but they live in separate houses. So I guess you can assume uh, that they're divorced since they don't live in the same house. Because what couple um, who are still together lives in two separate homes? So as she gets to, as she takes her child over to her husband's house um, we know that we learned that the child is autistic and they're trying to do things for him to um, do to function in society and get well and do well in school and stuff and Rocket and her husband have conflicting ideas about uh, how to go about that but then she drops off her kid at her husband's house and she has to do a diplomatic uh, mission for the Green Lan for for the Justice League meeting with the Green Lantern Corps and the people of New Genesis, the new gods. And <clears throat> this is what really makes the arc good for me. Um, we see the Green Lanterns, we're getting to learn more about New Genesis and the people who live there and it's really cool we see orion metron there's one other character from new genesis that we see um can't think of his name i know high father and then the mother and of course they explain that orion is actually dark side son but in order to do a peace treaty high father and dark side switch sons <laughs> So that was part of that, that peace treaty and it really uh, affects this plot. Like Apocalypse can't um, do anything to mess with New Genesis and New Genesis can't do anything to mess with Apocalypse because they signed a peace treaty with each other. And that really hurts um, in Rocket's negotiations because she wants the Green Lantern Corps and New Genesis to help um, off stop the off-world trafficking that's going on. Um, the Green Lanterns are pretty hesitant about doing it because they're like, we have other problems. We can't just focus on this. We have different galaxies we have to take care of. And um, with the Green Lanterns, another really cool thing we see is we see Razor. And Razor, <clears throat> um, it, it, it's like the same thing as in Green Lantern, the animated series. Um, someone asked Greg Wiseman whether or not Green Lantern, the animated series, was canon. And he says, it's not, but it's adjacent. And the reason why this is so big, because when we see Razor, it's the same as exactly it's the same as the one in Green Lantern the animated series like him having his red ring um, him like getting a blue ring it's been a while since I've seen it but the biggest thing is he's still looking for Aya 
So that was the AI that sacrificed herself in order to stop, I believe, the Manhunter and Green Lantern in the animated series. So one of the best Green Lantern shows um, we've ever seen. It really gave us a really good dive into Green Lantern lore for the DC Universe. <clears throat> but anyway, it's in this show. We see Razor. Uh, Razor... Mm -hmm. Um, he's interacting with Metron, and Metron is being, yeah, he's full of hubris, he's messing with Razor. Um, Razor gets his red and his blue ring, and he has two rings together, and it looks so cool. It was so amazing. So amazing. Um, another cool thing um, we've seen here... Um, we finally know about the person who blew up that Zeta tube station on Mars. Turns out it's a Kryptonian from the future, and that's why the Legion of Superheroes are with us. See, this is what Rocket's arc is. It's really um, propelling or explaining other arcs that are going on. So the Legion is after this time traveling Kryptonian, because um, this time traveling Kryptonian uh, wants to release his family from the Phantom Zone, which is General Zod and his followers. They were exiled to Krypton because um, they were um, traitors to the High Council and stuff. And with that, we finally see where Connor has been. So we got a um, a flash of him during Zantana's arc. Um, they know that, he, um, that we know that he's in the Phantom Zone. He is in the Phantom Zone and he's hallucinating in there until Zod finds him, helps him get through. Um, but what we see now is that um, Superboy's been in there so long that he doesn't remember um, his life before the Phantom Zone, and now he's just loyal to Zod. <laughs> and another amazing, um, cool thing. Oh. Another cool thing that we saw um, Beast Boy, we see Beast Boy talking with Black Canary, and he's really just trying to fake it till he makes it. But he finally gives in and admits that uh, he needs help. And Black Canary really gets down to the bottom of it because while he's in the interview, um, believing he's just sad about Superboy, she really learns that he has difficulty um, dealing with um, losing people close to him. He's sad about losing his mom still. He's sad about what happened to Wally. Um, and Superboy was really close to him. And he was really sad about that too. And so that kind of just uh, broke the camel's back. We've seen, like, we've known Beast Boy have, we've known for a while, if you've been following the show, that Beast Boy has had issues dealing with loss. When he was introduced to us in season two, we saw that he struggled with it when his mom passed away. And in season three, um, we saw he was still struggling with it immensely um, when he quit um, being a hero and wanted to be an actor because Wally passed away and that made him think of his mom again. So. Whenever anyone really close passes away, it really affects Beast Boy. <laughs> and um, I guess one thing, well, like I said, if you follow the show um, regularly, season to season, you can pick up on these things. But I think what would really um, help this even more. Um, is with these time skips that Young Justice likes to do. Like after season one, um, they did a five-year time skip. Um, 
and after season two they did like a three year time skip a lot happens in those time skips and they merely just um, reference them talk about them it would really be best if they really showed them to us because um, then that stuff that goes down that season would be a lot more impactful and plus people wouldn't get lost and say who's this character who's that character when did they join the team uh, um, like when Tula died like what how did that happen it was during like that time skip but it would have been better if they showed it to us instead of told us <clears throat> I digress um, with uh, Rocket uh, we really see her character wrap up with Orion. Her and Orion have some tension in between each other. Um, Orion, when they are working together to uh, stop a to stop someone from escaping um, away from one from Super Town or whatever, wherever the New Genesis capital is called, um, she puts him and herself in a um, bubble, but. Orion doesn't want to be in there because he's claustrophobic and that makes her think of her son because he kind of has a, um, a mental like issue as well <laughs> but how it really all comes together is um, when they're in this final battle on New Genesis and a Promethean is about to wake up and everything <laughs> Makan um, McGann's younger brother brother who's working with the time traveling kryptonian puts them when i say them orion and rocket in um some mind trance uh, when he puts them in there uh, rocket is able to fight through it and um work with orion um to get out of it as well <clears throat> and when they get out of it they're closer to each other because she's able to work with um, Orion with his um, issue and that helps her find a way to help her son with his mental issue as well and they're able to work together um, quiet the Promethean and get a new Genesis and the Green Lantern Corps to <clears throat> work with them to stop the off-site off-world trafficking so Overall, really good arc. Uh, wasn't too much focus on Rocket. Um, a lot of other things were going on in this arc. We have what was going on with Superboy and the Kryptonians trapped in there. When I say there, the Phantom Zone. And we have um, Green Lantern, um, the animated series Razor, his um, character arc. We have Beast Boy. There was one other one, um, Beast Boy, Superboy in the Phantom Zone, oh, the whole Legion plot, yes, the Legion, um, explaining their arc with the time-traveling Kryptonian, so a lot of uh, other arcs were being pushed forward in this one. So overall, I liked it, maybe we could have focused on Rocket a lot more and not kind of put not wrap up her arc at the very not wrap up her character development at the very end uh, to me it was kind of on the back burner i'd have liked to see more progression and more of a process from her going to the point of not understanding orion to like understanding him and stuff um, more of a process and that's what yeah more of a process okay if you liked what I had to share um, please hit the like button and subscribe um, thank you all for watching this video um, have a great day